So as far as interacting with Redis, um, you know, I, I mentioned that it is really fairly simple and straightforward. And I'm gonna stay behind, I'm gonna stick behind uh, that assertion. However, uh, on the other side of this coin, there are over 200, I think it's maybe 260 or so commands in Redis. Uh, and, and some of them are a little bit weird looking, but once you kind of get in the groove of it, uh, you'll find that really it's frequently just kind of variations on a couple of core commands. So uh, set and get are the primary ways that we uh, write and read respectively uh, data to Redis. And we'll find that we'll have uh, commands like mset, which is just taking the set command and saying we want to set multiple uh, values at once or h set, which is just for setting values in a hash uh, data construct, or mh set, which is setting multiple values in a hash data construct. So uh, at first you see things like mh set and mh get, and it seems kind of complicated, but then you just have to kind of get your head around the structure of these commands, and uh, yeah, it, it really starts to kind of make, make sense. Um, and then also, as I mentioned, our queries don't typically look like what we might uh, expect in SQL or something like that. Uh, typically, it's just the command and then the key and then whatever value uh, when you're writing or just the command and the key when you're reading something out. So uh, not really a lot of weird syntax to deal with. It's, it's, it's a pretty lightweight uh, interaction in that uh, in that manner um, and then also I will point out uh, that our commands like set and get are not case sensitive however our keys are case sensitive and this is something uh, that we've seen with a lot of the uh, the DBMS's that we have dealt with so far so we're going to be using the Redis uh, CLI, uh, but uh, also I will show you guys, I think I'll show you guys how we can send commands directly over the network. And there's any number of, of clients and other access mechanisms we can use, but uh, the commands that we issue through Redis CLI, you would use the same commands uh, really regardless of how you are interacting with it. And uh, Redis has some very nice help built into it. Uh, so you can, for any of our commands, just type help and then the command, and it will tell you the syntax uh, of that command. Also, as we're typing in the commands in the Redis CLI, uh, it pops up kind of little hints as to what goes next. And uh, if you just type the word help and start hitting tab, uh, it will scroll through all the possible commands that uh, it can give you some guidance on. So. Um, yeah, all of our DBMSs have kind of varying levels of built-in support and documentation, but uh, Redis's built-in support is, uh, is quite useful. So, uh, yeah, we've pretty much said all of this stuff already. And I think at this point, we're, we're pretty much ready to go ahead and connect up to Redis. So our Redis installation is hosted in AWS Elastic Cache. Uh, this is a managed service, very similar to how we uh, installed and ran Postgres in RDS and Relational Database Service. And it's a little bit different than DynamoDB in that DynamoDB is really a 100% managed by um, Amazon with ElastiCache, we did actually have to go in and uh, specify some of the uh, configuration and components of our Redis instance, uh, but there's really no management above and beyond that. So uh, yeah, Amazon kind of takes care of, of all the details and then we just get a, uh, an IP address that we can connect to. But again, that IP address is only accessible from within uh, 
within our private Amazon network, okay? Which is why we're gonna have to connect to our MongoDB server first. And nothing special about it being the MongoDB server, that just happens to be a server that is on the right secure network in order to be able to uh, have physical network access to uh, the Redis server. So this could be on, well, really any of our other database servers or could just be on a, uh, you know, a totally unrelated Linux server that just happens to live on that network. I am connected via SSH to the MongoDB server and I'm just gonna type Redis dash CLI, and that's the Redis, Redis client, uh, which I have already installed on here using uh, apt-get, the package manager, or apt, the package manager that we've used in, uh, in some of our previous things. So Redis uh, CLI dash, a, dash H, and then the uh, host name, which in this case is redis.gmgrimes.com, and uh, I don't even need to mask this because anyone else on the internet who tries to connect to this won't be able to connect to this unless they were inside uh, our secure network already. And then the port is 6379. And notice no username, no password, no nothing. And we are connected to our Redis server. So I'm gonna be just uh, kind of going along with the examples and the code that's in the PowerPoint slide deck, which is of course available on Blackboard <clears throat> already. And uh, yeah, you can kind of follow along, but I, I would ask since this is a shared environment, if you do create anything uh, in the Redis database while we're doing this, prefix it with your uh, username or your initials or something like that, just so we don't uh, kind of step on top of each other. All that we do in Redis is define a key and some value for that key. Um, so in this case, we're gonna create uh, some kind of student database uh, stuff. So we're just gonna use the set command and notice that Redis has kind of uh, in gray here, hopefully you can see that. Uh, suggested to us that the next thing we need to do is specify our key and then a value and then some other things here that we're going to look at later like uh, expiration for uh, for the key and, and things like that. So we're going to set a key that I'm going to call student 1111. Just imagine this is a student ID or some kind of unique evaluate or a unique identifier and student 1111 has a value of Alicia. Okay, so now we have this in our Reddit database, our Redis database, and we can use the git operation to retrieve the value of this item that has a key of student 1111. So we'll do uh, just a couple more of these. We'll make student 2222 bin student. 3333 is Chris. We might even want to have some courses in our database. So we're going to set Bzan 6354. So that key with a value of database management tools for business analytics. And then we'll have a key of Bzan 6356 with a value of advanced database management tools for business analytics. And uh, I know these are not currently the titles of these classes, but uh, this will be the titles of these classes uh, pretty soon, which I think is a little more reflective of the courses than whatever they are now. So, so at this point we have uh, these three student keys and two uh, kind of course keys. And if we just type uh, keys, and then uh, it says a pattern. I'm just going to give a pattern of asterisk. This tells us what all keys have been created in Redis. Okay, uh, so we have these three student keys, our two course keys. We could uh, provide a little different pattern and say, you know, we only want to see keys that start with STU. So we see our student keys, or, you know, we could see our keys that start with Bzan. So this is kind of a uh, 
kind of a, a primitive way of being able to see what is in our database, but it's, uh, it's better than nothing. And, uh, and a lot of the way we're able to kind of query and sort and look at our data in Redis is a little bit primitive, but that's uh, the kind of the price we pay for the very high performance. So up to this point, we have just been setting individual keys or setting values for individual keys. But as we alluded to earlier, uh, we can use the command mset for multiple set to be able to set multiple val or set keys or sorry, set values for multiple keys all at once. So the pattern that we're following here is just a key and then a value and then a key and a value and a key and a value. And we don't have to specify, um, you know, anything above and beyond a key and a value. That's all Redis is going to uh, expect, right? And uh, if we had a value that had a space in it, we just need to wrap that in quotes like this. And when we do this, it just says, okay. And you see this inserted, you know, student 444, 555, 666, and 777. Those are now keys in our database. So we can, using the get command, of course, read these out individually. We could say uh, get bzan 6354, and the value that's returned is the uh, name of that course, which of course is the value that we, we specified. If we want to return values for multiple keys at once, uh, we can use the command mget and then any number of keys uh, that we want. So say, you know, mget student 111222222 and we'll get those. And they don't have to all be similar keys. You know, we could uh, do something like this and, and get all of those values, values back. So mget allows us to get mult or get the value of multiple keys all in one a uh, very fast command. As far as updating values, uh, there is no uh, different command for updating. It's just if we, oops, if we set a value for a key that already exists, right? So if we uh, look at the value of student uh, 2222, it's currently been, uh, if we were to set that to some other value and then get it again, you see it's been it's been updated. So uh, in order to uh, to update a value, you just set some new value on top of that already existing key. And then if we wanted to delete a key from our database, we just use del and we provide the uh, the val or the key that we want to delete. So if we want to get rid of uh, this, we say del student 2222, uh, and it responds with a one, just indicating this is how many, uh, how many items it deleted. And now if we try to get the value of that key we just deleted, uh, we get nil. That's just a null result uh, in response. And if we look at our keys, you can see student 2222 is no longer in our database. Um, we can delete you know, multiple, multiple at the same time. And that tells us now we've deleted two keys. So Redis gives us some kind of quick feedback about, about what's going on. And then the uh, kind of ultimate destruction if we uh, if we decided we wanted to delete everything all at once it's uh, the very simple command of flush DB and as soon as we run that now we look and everything in our Redis database is gone all at once now as we will see in a, in an upcoming example uh, we can actually have multiple 
Redis databases, which we call namespaces, uh, on our Redis server. And if instead of flush DB, we say flush all, that actually deletes everything from every namespace on our database server instead of just the one uh, namespace that we're currently connected to, which is what flush DB does. So uh, like most databases, it is very fast and very easy to uh, to delete everything. Uh, that can be a resume generating event. So uh, due to the kind of lax security in, in Redis, which again is by design uh, in order to keep everything super fast, Redis does have a little bit of uh, what we would call security through obscurity in that it will allow you to rename commands. And so one of the common uh, practices in a, in a Reddit config, Redis configuration would be to rename some of these uh, very destructive commands like flush db and flush all to something that someone is not going to accidentally type. Um, now, by virtue of this Redis instance being um, hosted in Amazon Elasticache, that's actually a feature that AWS uh, has disabled, that you can't rename these commands. But in some other uh, installations of Redis, you would be able to do that. So if you're ever uh, interacting with Redis you know, on the job or in some other environment, and maybe some command that you expect to be there is is not there or is not working as expected it could be possible that the administrator has uh, simply renamed that command to something else and uh, and you're not able to access it so okay that's still one all right so that's kind of our basic create read update and delete operations in Redis. And uh, of course, there's a lot of other stuff that we can do. So let's see. Okay, so everything is empty at this point. So I'm going to create a new key, which I'm going to call counter. And I'm going to set it to a value of one. Okay. And now one thing I will point out is that when we were getting uh, all of these values, let's see, where are we getting values? When we're getting these values, Redis returns them wrapped in quotation marks, right? Which we typically think of as being a characteristic of something being a string. And we have when we have numbers that are not wrapped in quotation marks, that that would be a number. Um, however, if we get the value for this key counter, we see that Redis still returns it wrapped in quotation marks. So it kind of looks like a string. However, Redis is actually storing any value that is uh, purely numeric in nature as a number. And we can do some basic arithmetic functions um, on that value, specifically using our increment operator. So since we have this key called counter with a value of one, we can say increment or INCR counter. And when we do this, it's going to just add one to that. So it increments it from one to two. And as many times as we do that, it will just keep uh, incrementing it by one. So now this key counter has a value of nine, which we see here. But also if we said, you know, get counter, the value is now nine. And there's a similar command, uh, incr by, so increment by. So we're going to Incre by counter and let's say increment by five. So since it currently has a value of nine, it's going to wind up with a value of 14. So this is just a really handy way that uh, if you wanted to count, you know, the number of hits that a, a website has had, or the number of hits, uh, something in your uh, cache, if you're using Redis as a caching server has had, this increment or increment by uh, operation could be uh, really useful. 
So another kind of useful command in Redis or another feature of Redis is the fact that much like a relational database management system, uh, we can have transactions in Redis. And just to kind of refresh your memory back to our, our Postgres days is we, uh, we said that we can enclose multiple individual operations in a transaction if we want to make sure that all of those operations are either they all happen or none of them happen. And kind of the classic example of this is in a bank transaction, uh, if you're say transferring money from your checking account to your savings account, there's actually two things that happen. You deduct the money from the first account and then you add the money to the second account. Well, you wanna make sure that when you do that, they either both happen or neither one of them happens because uh, otherwise you're going to wind up you know, either losing money or the bank's going to be losing money. So uh, typically in a relational database management system, we would wrap those two operations in a transaction and we can do the same thing in, um, uh, in Redis by using the multi command. So I'm gonna go ahead and set two keys uh, one checking and let's say we have a checking account with a balance of 500 and we have a savings account with a value of 10,000. Okay. So now if we, you know, say get checking, we see that that value is 500. And if we say get savings, that value is 10,000. So if we want to move say a thousand dollars from, from checking to savings, we would start a transaction by saying multi. Okay, and now Redis says, okay, you're in transaction mode. We want to say uh, set checking to 1500. And instead of saying, okay, Redis says, all right, now that uh, operation is queued up. It hasn't actually done this yet. It's just kind of ready to do this. And we can say set uh, savings now to 9,000. And if, uh, if something were to go wrong, if our server crashed or if, uh, if uh, the transaction was canceled for whatever reason, this hasn't actually been written to the database in any way at this point. And so we could say discard. And now when we look at the balance of our checking account and the balance of our savings account, you can see that none of that actually took place. But if we do multi and then say set checking to uh, 1500 and set savings to 9000 and now exec, okay, it executed these two queries. And now if we get savings and get checking, you can see that those actually, um, actually did take place. So just like our relational database management systems, Redis can have uh, transactions. And then uh, I think this is the last command we're going to look at before we move on to looking at the data structures that are available in Redis, which is a really cool feature, is this idea of values being able to expire or keys being able to expire after uh, some period of time. So. Uh, let's imagine we have a, uh, you know, a status, right? And your status could be, you know, waiting or ready or not ready or something like that. And you're only going to stay in a certain status for some period of time. So uh, in this case, we are, we're creating a key called status and a value of that that just says I'm ready, right? And if we say get status, and again, that's case sensitive. So if I had this messy typo, it's not going to work, right? I have to have to match the case. So the value for status is currently I'm ready. And that's going to stay that way uh, forever or until our server loses power since this is a, an in-memory database. But if we say expire status, and let's say we want to expire it in five seconds, okay? So the status continues to exist for a little while, but then five seconds after we executed this command, 
that uh, value was released from that key. And now that key uh, no longer exists at all, right? And there is no status key anymore. We can, in addition to telling, telling a Redis we want to expire a, a key after some period of time after that key has already been established, we can also uh, use the set X or set expiration uh, command to uh, tell Redis that we want to expire a key in a certain period of time as we're creating it. So to do that, we say set X, and in this case, let's just call our key status again. Uh, and we want to expire it in 10 seconds. Okay, and so now we again have this uh, get stat, or we have a value for this key status. And after 10 seconds, it goes away, okay? And if we have a key that we know is going to be expiring, we can see how long it's going to be until it expires by using the command TTL, which stands for time to live. And that's uh, TTL is a very common uh, phrase for this type of uh for this type of thing, where you have some values that are only going to be valid for a certain period of time, uh, TTL is a very common thing in computing. So uh, if we set that and then we say TTL status, seven seconds, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then when you get this value of negative two, that means that uh, that key has expired. So this would be something that uh, would be very handy when you're using Redis as a cache. And uh, you might say, you know, we want to keep this value uh, for only 60 seconds or maybe 600 seconds or 3,600 seconds, you know, whatever makes sense for your, uh, uh, for your business case. And then Redis can kind of automatically clean itself up. We can also uh, rename keys uh, using the rename command. So we can say uh, if we wanted to rename our uh, checking account to be a, uh, you know, CK instead of checking. Now when we do that, you know, instead of uh, checking, now that uh, that item just has a a key of CK and, and the value is unchanged. It just changed the name of it. And then the final thing that we're going to look at before we move on to our data structures is this idea of having multiple namespaces in our Redis server. So uh, Redis, like, uh, like computers in general, starts counting at zero uh, instead of counting at one like, uh, like most humans do. Um, so by default, when we connect to our Redis server, we are in namespace zero. Okay, so uh, if we did something like, uh, like this, let's say we wanted to have a, a key of greeting and a value of hello for that key. You know, there's our, our greeting is hello, right? So we're just putting this there so we can see the difference when we switch to our other namespace which we do with a, a command that is kind of unfortunately very familiar to us, but has a very different use in Redis than it does in SQL, uh, which is select. Okay, so we use the command select to switch to another namespace. So if we say select one, that's going to change us to namespace one. And you can see that our prompt has changed to indicate this. And now if we say, get greeting, we see there is no value for the key greeting in this namespace. And in fact, if we look at the keys that are in this namespace, there is nothing there, right? So we could set values for keys that have the same name in this namespace as what exists in other namespaces, and that's really no problem. So in namespace one, uh, maybe we wanna have a greeting of Ahoy, right? So we could say get greeting when we're in namespace one, 
and we get this value of ahoy. But if we switch back to our default namespace, namespace zero, and run this same command, git greeting, you say it's hello, because we're really connected to now a different database within Redis, okay? So if we go back to namespace one, we have this other value for, for greeting, which is uh, kind of what we expect. And then uh, again, when we uh, want to get rid of everything, uh, flush all gets rid of, or flush DB gets every, rid of everything that is in your uh, database. And if we do flush all, oops, that's gotten rid of everything in the database that we're currently in, but also everything that's in every other database or every other namespace in our Redis server. So we're actually at this point, since I did a flush all, back to just a completely clear and clean Redis server. Almost too easy to destroy the world in Redis.